Good morning, everybody. Uh, I know we're having people pop on here. I see Susanna. I see Greg popping on. Good morning to everybody. Um, okay, so we're back in the office. <clears throat> um, Indiana has opened back up. Um, I know Florida has opened back up. You can see this is going on. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. What's up, Greg? I saw a small bird fly out of here yesterday, so I, I don't know where it's going. Who knows? Um, let me turn down this music, too. We're back in the office, so people got the music bumping here. Um, okay, so and you guys can hear me okay. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. So um, I'm not muted. <laughs> what's that? I'm not muted. I got my gear on now. You are now. You're, you're, you're both muted now. <laughs> well, we'll have more people pop on here. But um, so uh, we're open. Florida's open. Illinois is a little bit challenged in that way. Uh, so I know we're going to have some uh, Illinois. Well, Susanna's from Illinois. So uh, as businesses get open and this economy starts to come back a little bit from where it, uh, it, it, it went to, um, it's going to be real interesting uh, what's going on with the real estate market. I'm expecting a busy market for real estate agents and brokers. I'm also expecting, good morning, Carlos. I'm also expecting a, uh, uh, a uh, busy uh, time for banks and lenders um, in both good and bad. That's kind of my preset. That's not what I wanted to talk about on today's training. <clears throat> but tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, what we're going to do is I'm going to go through a really cool, fast tip for everybody in sales. Um, and it's something really, really simple, but studies have shown it makes a big difference. So when you're working with your clients, uh, it really does make a, a difference in the little things that you do and you can bring to the conversation that can close that buyer, that can close that seller. Uh, you know, if you're going to list their house. So uh, important. And then just after that tip tomorrow, um, what I'm going to do is uh, have kind of an open forum. So what I'd like to do is have a, uh, a forum in which you guys are bringing your questions, <clears throat> your challenges, your problems. Maybe you don't know where to start in this situation. Maybe you've got a buyer that you're working with that you're having trouble with or a seller that you're having trouble with. Whatever it is, bring it. Um, we're going to talk about that. So have your questions ready to go. If something that you want me to look at ahead of time, go ahead and send that later uh, today. Um, so today, I've been, as you guys all know, if you've spent time, uh, which I know you guys are in the uh, back office, you are seeing um, uh, changes there. And one of the things that I've been working on is to close out this. Uh, module number five, the sales module. Uh, we keep adding things to it. We just have a couple of more things. But today's call is uh, one that I've been working on over the last uh, couple days. I'm going to go to it. So I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> and let's, oh, we got something in the chat. Hold on, stand by for me. Let me go back to that screen. Hold on. Boom. We had something. Somebody put something in the chat. Everybody good? Uh, yes. Oh, you put that to me, Greg. I got you. I thought that was a question. I see you. Okay. So let me go ahead and share. Does everybody see my screen? You guys can all see that? Good. Uh, yep. Now let me get my notes up. And then we get the cover up. Boom. All right. So I think that would be uh, that's better over there. Can, can you guys see the everybody on the call on the right side of the screen when I move it? No? Okay. That's just on mine. See? You learn something every day. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to um, – I'll just keep that there. I know it's on the recording. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to uh, – I'll bring you guys back here in a second. <clears throat> so on today's call, uh, have you ever been in a situation where you're working with somebody, either a buyer, a seller, or a renter, and 
you just can't get them to the close. You just can't because they come up with a, a objection, objection, objection. Now, if you guys have been following along, which I know you have, you have been learning about objections. You've been learning how to handle them. You know, here at Anton, we have this five-step uh, process to handle them. But sometimes when, I'm, uh, when I hear what, I, what could be an objection from somebody, it's not an objection at all. There's two things that you need to be aware of. One is a brush off and two is a smoke screen, a brush off and a smoke screen. Now, uh, you probably heard me talk about the brush off a couple of webinars ago. And what the brush off is, hey, listen, I just don't have the time right now. I got a lot of things going on. Uh, you know, uh, can you get me next week? And it's legit. They don't have the time. They're a brush off. Um, you've got to kind of recognize that as opposed to um, what a, a smoke screen is, which I'm going to go into in a minute. Now, you know what helps with brush offs? You know what helps with smoke screens is if you position yourself as the expert in your market and that's getting out marketing materials like putting out you know it, your facebook your instagram i was i had a conversation with heather yesterday about uh instagram and facebook and how they were late in, in uh, putting more content out on both uh for her but the other thing is um if you are the expert in your marketplace you have less of a chance of getting a brush off if you're the expert in your marketplace and you do some of the things that we're talking about with marketing, uh, you're going to have less of the smoke screens, but you're not going to eliminate them altogether. And so today's topic on the, the, the training today is about the smoke screen. Um, so what is the smoke screen? You can see my high tech. That's right. I said high tech. Most people have a whiteboard. <clears throat> Most people have this, uh, you know, elaborate system, maybe a, 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 a monitor screen that they could write on. Not me, baby. I've just got my good old notes and I got my good old Microsoft Word covering that up uh, as my cover up here. But you guys get the point. We keep it simple, right to the point uh, so that we can help you guys um, with uh, your sales in, is the, in the simplest manner possible. So what is a smokescreen? Have you ever answered an objection from a prospect only to be given another one that was completely unrelated to the first one? You guys uh, all know what I'm talking about if you've been in this uh, for a while. And then after you battled your way through that one, you get another one. These are smokescreens. These aren't objections. <clears throat> and so what a smokescreen is, is a scenario where... Um, they're not giving you what the real objection is. So let's bring it to housing. So uh, housing is an interesting thing when you're selling housing uh, for a, a homeowner or you're, you're representing a buyer to get into a house. The biggest thing, not only is this the biggest investment financially for people, but this is also a huge a huge, by the way, this is my microphone. You kind of see this. Uh, I treat these almost like a, almost like a, um, a podcast kind of thing. And I just noticed that Joe Rogan got, just got a hundred million dollars for uh, moving his podcast from YouTube to Spotify. That's crazy to me. I don't, I'm not thinking I'm going to get a hundred million dollars for our stuff here. But $100 million may not be enough to live on sooner or later, but we'll see about that. So uh, uh, in moving my mic here to make sure you guys can hear me, one of the things that I know for sure is that if you can identify these smoke screens as a uh, real estate agent broker, <clears throat> you're going to get more closings. You're going to get more contracts. You're going to work with more buyers, more sellers, more renters. Remember, buy, sell, rent. Those are our clients. So if you've been in, in this role in any length of time, um, uh, you may not know how to handle that, uh, of what a smoke screen is. Until now, we're going to help you out here. Uh, so I'm going to teach you a real simple technique that's going to enable you to avoid the common trap that about 80 to 85% 
of your competition, other real estate agents fall into. Uh, and so here it is. It's real simple. Stop answering objections. Most of the time, uh, our competitors, and I'm not knocking anybody, it's just how the industry is, you know, 20% of the real estate agents and brokers out there are doing, you know, the majority of the uh, success work out there and 80% are not. So that's where I'm getting these numbers from. So stop answering objections. Either you put them into the five step system that we have. And if you don't uh, remember that, you can always go back into agent broker blueprint and go through that training. Or what you can do is <clears throat> you can put them uh, in a situation where you're realizing, hey, this isn't an objection. Stop answering it. This is a smokescreen. This is not the real objection. I need to find out what the real objection is. So it's going to be one of those two things. Once you get to the real objection, put them through the five-step process. If it's not the real objection, just a smokescreen and not a brush off, but just a smokescreen, then you're going to uh, immediately stop answering that objection and you're going to have to go back and do some research to find out what it is. Now, this is where I was going earlier before I got distracted by my uh, Joe Rogan comment. Uh, because housing, buy, sell, rent, because housing is so uh, not only the biggest investment of people's lifetimes, but it's so emotional. I mean, it's just emotional. My wife uh, and I are looking for homes in uh, in uh, Key West, Florida right now. And I, I can't tell you, the, and I know this, and it's hard to do. I can't tell you the conversation of, you know, we see the house. Uh, we fall in love with the features of the house. We see the price. Uh, you know, emotions start to play. And uh, we start to think, you know, we should put an offer on that. Um, we real, oh, look at that landscaping. Got to have that house. Look at the kitchen. I got to have that house. Emotion, it comes into play. And I know um, it, that's not the right necessarily thing to do. <clears throat> but uh, the, the idea of emotion is a lot of times the smoke screen that you're getting uh, with this. It's not the real objection. The other one is money. Money is the real objection. Uh, usually with this. Um, for instance, uh, money could be, you know, if a, if a homeowner knows he's got to sell, but he um, or she doesn't know how it's going to end up. I mean, they are either over leveraged or they're right there and they don't know if they have to bring money to closing. They haven't really done the math or if they know they got to sell because they can't afford the house, but they don't want to go down that path. And so it's a money thing. So it's going to be real important for you to uh, go through this, this exercise. Stop answering the, the objections. They're not objections. They're smoke screens. And start the work on getting to the real, true objection. So I know that may sound absurd for a lot of people. When someone gives you an objection, they almost always are hiding what the real one is. Um, and so you might say, you know, why people do that? Let me give you another example. Uh, if you tell your commission, if they tell you your commission is too high, um, what they really mean is they can get it possibly cheaper with another agent. They've already talked to another agent. And if you're trying to pull the trigger to buy a house with your client and they say, for instance, they're really in the, they're, they're really in the market. Uh, I'm sorry. They're not really in the market right now. They're just kind of browsing for a house. I put shop in there, but browsing for a house. You know, they're not really, it's kind of like when you walk into a furniture store and, and all of a sudden you get the sales reps come to you and, you know, 98% of the time they hear, hey, listen, we're just browsing right now. Thank you. Okay, that's great. I'll be over here if you need me. And then uh, inevitably you find them following you around the store. I don't know if you guys, if that's just a me thing or if you guys have experienced that, they do kind of follow you. They're in the next aisle. They're hiding behind the bush. Uh, and then when you pull the, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going off on some tangents today. But they're not real objections. You got to really kind of find out what uh, that is. If somebody is looking on the MLS, if somebody is looking, uh, for instance, I did this whole FISBO thing. By the way, another uh, self-ad here. If you guys go into Agent Broker Blueprint and you go back to that FISBO 
Um, it's the best FISBO program of any real estate company around, period. Uh, if you go there, this is going to get you an extra six listings, in my opinion, minimally, minimally a year. But I've redid it. If you just do it, it does take a little um, bit of um, uh, hustle, which all of you guys have uh, to get in there. But I'm telling you, if you work this system, you're going to get listings or you're going to have an opportunity to sell more properties so uh, or bring buyers to properties. But when somebody lists a property as a FISBO, they want to sell it. They're, they're already telling the world, hey, I'm selling this property. I'm just, you know, one of the reasons that they're not using an agent, I'm just cheap and I don't want to pay an agent. I had a phone call yesterday with a FISBO and, you know, I was just real direct. I was like, hey, is it, is it because you're, you know, I was kind of, um, I was kind of in one of those moods and I just, uh, and it worked out well for me. Take caution when you use this technique. I just kind of said, hey, is it because you're cheap? You just didn't want to pay an agent? He's like, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm cheap. And I go, look, man, I totally understand that. Remember, agree to every, every single thing that they say, especially the objections. Totally understand why you would do that. You know, you want to save money. It's important. You know, we're having a challenge with our economy. Totally understand why you want to save money. But let me ask you a question. You know, if I could get you more than you're thinking you could get right now, listing that as a FISBO, uh, uh, would you be willing to pay me a commission if I brought you a buyer? And he said, yeah, I mean, if you brought me a buyer and, and you know, I could get more for sure. And I said, let me ask you this too. Uh, studies have shown by the National Association of Realtors, some of the best um, researchers and biggest lobbyists in the country. Studies have shown that 80, around 80% of FISBOs eventually go with an agent. Let me ask you this. If that were the case, and based on what you know and, and my experience in this market, and we can agree upon a commission structure that would be good for you uh, and, and palatable for you, am I your guy? Yeah, you sound like a hustler. You know, sound like good. So all I'm doing there is I'm working to lay the seeds in the future when he gives up or she gives up. And number two, um, I am uh, giving myself an open door right now to bring them a buyer. A lot of times, whether it's FISBOs, whether it's expired listings, you get that a lot. By the way, there's an excellent module in um, AB Blueprint about expired listings as well. Uh, but you're going to get these uh, type of things. Some are uh, objections for sure. Others are smoke screens. Uh, getting down to the, the real objection, like in the case with the FISBO guy, I said, hey, is it because you're cheap? You know, is that it? Um, uh, yeah, that's it. Boom. That's the real objection. He's cheap. And that's cool. As long as you understand it, you can move forward. But, you know, hey, uh, yeah, my wife, we're just kind of testing the market. That's a that's a smokescreen. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to see how many... Um, I just wanted to kind of see if there would be any interest in the neighborhood or I just wanted to kind of see what type of offers we would get or I just uh, am testing the waters. We're considering moving to Florida. No, you want to move to Florida. That's for sure. You want to move to Florida. So all of these things they're saying are smoke screens. Uh, and so it's really good to get right to the bottom. Answering the price objection at this point means you're just falling for their smokescreen. Uh, and when I say price objection, it's this first one here, which is why you get another objection. It's not um, um, your commission is too high. It's not that. It's not your commission is too high. You get that all the time. And that's not really it. It may come down to a money thing. Uh, to them, but that typically is not it. You got to keep uh, going with that. If you're sick and tired of losing control of the sale and you want to know if your prospect is real or not, after all, this is what the smoke screens are giving you. Are they real or not? Um, then you must question and isolate the objections you get before you answer them. Here's how to do it specifically. Uh, here's how to do it. All of this, by the way, will be an AD blueprint. If your prospect tells you your commission is too high, simply ask, hey, I understand, Tom. And, you know, let me ask you, if our commission or if our price was right, 
uh, and you were, you know, comfortable going forward. I put comfortable spending, but going forward with us in listing your house. I should change that right now. With us in listing your house. I see what you guys are doing. I see you're peeking. I get it. I see it. Um, would you list your house uh, with me today? I'll fix that later. Would you list your house with me today? Um, I'm going to create a template for all this, but remember what I'm doing is in this case is if I am, if I think that this is a smoke screen or an objection, I want to kind of do my research here. If it's an objection, I'm, I'm isolating it. It's one of the five steps that we talked about a couple of weeks ago with objections. I understand, Mary. Uh, let me ask you, if my listing commission was uh, comfortable, you were comfortable with that, and um, you know, you're comfortable with how we're going to market the house, would you list the home with me today? And look what I'm doing in my head. Would you list the home with me today? So I'm shaking my head physically because there's um, more communication than just verbal. And, uh, you know, I'm directing them to the point where would you list with me? Not in a week, not in two weeks. Would you list with me today? I'll do this also, and you'll see it here in a second. I'll do this also when there's another person in the decision-making process involved. You'll see that here in a second. Um, one of the things that, One of the things that is really important to me, and you guys sense this on these trainings, I use a lot of, I try to use a lot of science. Um, I feel like I could be a science geek. Heather says I'm a science geek, uh, and that may be true. But I think science is interesting, especially in how people behave. Um, it's real interesting for me in sales. Did you notice last week on Tuesday's webinar, not Wednesday's, but Tuesday's webinar, did you notice last week how um, we talked about uh, giving people options uh, in, in the closing process and how in giving people options, it actually makes them feel better about what they're purchasing. You see, when you're listing a house, for instance, um, they're actually purchasing your services. So when you give them options, they actually feel better uh, about the options you've chose. So what I'm going to develop for everyone is kind of a menu of services. Don't worry about what's in here uh, necessarily, but remember this here where my cursor is. Matter of fact, I'll do this. I'll go back up to it here. Um, Offer more than one option when you get them to the point when you're listing something. If you're working with a buyer, offer them more than one option when you're showing them houses. Hey, do you like A or B? You know, what would be more interested uh, in purchasing, A, B, or C, and why? Tell me why. So give them options. If you go with them with one option, it's not as strong. It's kind of like, look at it like this. This, my mic, you see these three legs? If there was one leg, this uh, microphone would, wouldn't stand. It couldn't stand. If there were two legs, it, it most likely couldn't stand. But three legs make it stand. It's more sturdy. When you are offering your services on the buy, the sell side, or even the rent side, go with options. It makes what you do stronger. Uh, just like a tripod for my mic or, you know, a camera or whatever. Go with a few options. And so let me just kind of uh, read this again. You all heard this two weeks ago or last week it was, uh, but I just want to read it again. In a study published by the Journal of Consumer Research, a researcher found that the number of product options had a big influence. One of Daniel's most famous experiments was based on consumers who were asked to purchase a DVD player. When a single DVD player was shown, only 10% purchased. Isn't that interesting? However, when Daniel introduced a second DVD player, the number of sales increased by 66%. Your buyers are likely to make a purchase if they feel confident about their decision. One way to minimize the brain's perception of risk is to present more than one option uh, so they can choose the lowest risk option for themselves. 
That's why when you're showing a house and you know you got the perfect house, always get another one. No matter if you, no matter if you know for certain they're not going to choose it, let them tell you, oh, I like A way over B. Or bring two more options. So you got three total. Oh, B, the second house was the one for us. A, it was too small. B, it needed too much work. Uh, definitely B. It strengthens what you are selling, your services uh, to them. They feel better about you. So what I would suggest when you're going through there, um, and, and this all goes back to smoke screens. This is how when you're getting smoke screens from people, they're nervous, or, or at least that's what a possibility could be. Or they, it's not really the true objection. You get to the true objection, you isolate it, you make them commit, and boom, then you tie that deal up, you got them, you close them down, and you, and you, and you lock them down. And then in, in that process, when you're going to give them your listing agreement, for instance, this is just an example of that, what I would suggest is giving them a menu of services. And this is how you're going to make more money in this process. And this is uh, where we're using science, where not a, a lot of your competition is or are. Um, and that is this. Uh, how do you get people to pay you 7%? This is how. You give them options on what to do. Remember, when you're selling their house, this is in a listing side now, not a buying side. When you're selling their house, it's the most emotional thing. Uh, that they're going through probably in the last several years, unless they do this every year, maybe in their whole lifetime, maybe. Um, also, uh, this is a big financial situation. So when you give them options, give good, better, best, good, better, best, because it's so, it's like their child. Like I, uh, last week uh, or two, gosh, how long ago was that? couple weeks ago now, uh, we had to take Avi to the hospital and, you know, I didn't care what anything costs, like give them the best, whatever it is, like, you know, um, and so it's interesting to me, you want 7% where your competition is getting five or five and a half or six, give them an option. This is their baby. This is their child. Go look, uh, we have better. I'll list your house for 5%. This is what we're going to do. Um, 6%, this is what we're going to do, or it's 7%, you can have this. Boom. And don't worry if you're like trying to think about all these things. I'm going to make this so simple for you guys. I'm going to make this a template that you can use and put in your listing presentation. That's one of the things I'm working on next is how to, how to put together the most badass, uh, can I say badass on here? I guess I can. The, the best possible listing presentation. You're going to have a PowerPoint. You're going to have this scenario in here. It's going to be a template. And you can go in and just plug and chug, put what you want in here, but have good, better, best. I'm telling you, people are like, man, if you can sell, if you could sell my house for X, I'm, I'll give you 7%. And one of those things may be a tiered pricing. Look, if I sell your house for 180 and we're listing it for 180, I get 7%. If I sell it for, you know, 170 to 180 or, or 140 to 180, whatever your thing is, it's 6%. You could do that as well, but a list of services in there, good, better, best. This is the way that you're going to get 7% more of the time. And chances are you're probably going to have the middle one be your most popular one, but you are going to get the 7% hits. Who's getting 7% uh, today on, on the market? Not many agents. They go to the path of least resistance. If the, if the listing uh, client, the homeowner says, look, I, I'll let you list my house, but I'm only going to pay you 5%. The average agent is like, okay, I'll take it. I'll take the 5%. And it may only be one or two percent difference, but two percent on a two hundred thousand dollar house is an extra four grand. If you did that six times uh, in a year, that's an extra twenty four grand. Just arranging yourself differently. Um, so all these little things add up. This is a way then you could get through the smoke screens of of uh, if it is money, turn it back on them. If they, if it is money and they're cheap. Um, give them a cheap option. I've always said in sales, I've been in sales for a long time. 
and I'm not the best sales guy. I'm probably the best looking sales guy. That was a joke. I'm making sure you guys are good. Maybe it wasn't a joke. Hopefully some people don't think it's a joke. A lot of people do. Uh, but I've been in sales for a long time. And one of the things that I know for sure is uh, that I like, giving thing, I like giving the people that I'm selling to what they want. Like ask them what they want. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of money. Well, why is that? Well, I'd like to save a lot of money. Well, uh, I had a grandmother tell me when you buy cheap, you buy often. You spend more money in the long run. And so uh, I would go down that path with them. I'd tell them a story about my grandmother and shoes. That's what the conversation was. And, you know, once you get to the core objection and through the smoke screens, give them options. You're going to have a better chance. This is probably going to be your, your best, uh, uh, sorry, your most popular one. Good, better, best. Uh, so better is going to be your most popular one, but you're going to hit this. You're going to hit this quite a bit uh, because it's their baby. It's just like taking, you know, my son into the emergency room, get him the best of whatever. I don't care what the price is. And you'll be surprised. Actually, I, you know, I say this is your most popular one, but if you get good at this and you get good at presenting this and through those smoke screens, you're going to see that your, your platinum uh, package uh, is the best. I just put these, these, labels up silver gold platinum you can call it whatever you want uh on there so uh again offer more options it's it's really important that you do that your sales are going to go up you're going to make more money i'm telling you you will outpace your competition for sure no i would be surprised if any other brokerages are training on this but uh if they are great uh but if they're not this is where you're going to pass them in the field you are going to simply outpace them because of all this so any other answer? So uh, let me just kind of read this last uh, sentence here, last two sentences. Your buyers are, are more, I did this last night late. So your buyers are more likely to make a purchase if they feel confident about their decision. One way to minimize the brain's perception of risk is to present more than one option so that they can choose the lowest risk option themselves. You'll do this with smoke screens. They could be nervous. They're selling their house, their biggest investment. They have emotion in it. Any answer other than yes means that price is not the objection in what we were talking about before. Answering it will get you nowhere. If, however, they say yes, then you get to negotiate the price and find a way to close the deal, i.e. this uh, right here. Another common smoke screen is uh, this one. I need to show this to my wife, husband, partner, boss, etc. cetera. Uh, you hear boss a lot when you're dealing with commercial, but a lot of you aren't doing commercial here. Although Carlos does have a commercial property for sale. Got to take in that coffee. So you'll hear this a lot too. Hey, I got I to gotta talk to my wife. We call this a spousal. Some of you know what this is, uh, more, are more familiar than others. We call this a spousal. So here's one way that you can handle it in real estate. Here's just one way. And uh, so again, here's a script. That's perfectly fine, Tom. Uh, I think, or you say, hey, I totally agree with that. I got a wife and I know I, I definitely talk it over a lot of things with her. I think you should show her this uh, or whoever they claim they need to show it to. And let me ask you something. If after you show this to Mary, um, and she says, Hey, that looks great. Whatever you, um, whatever you want to do, is this something that you would move forward with today? So in other words, again, I'm kind of isolating that objection and I'm, and I'm tying them down. That's a tie down. Would you do this today? And a lot of people aren't doing this or in, obviously you got to practice a little bit on these scripts, <coughs> But one of the things that I think is uh, interesting is, are you practicing? If you're not, you should. I, I'm telling you, it, it's amazing what practice does because sometimes you'll say this and it won't, you won't have to think about it. It just comes out. Hey, that's perfectly fine. I totally get that. When you talk to Mary tonight, though, and she says, hey, that looks great. Whatever you want to do, Tom, uh, is this something you'll list with me today? And so one of the things that you could do, this takes a little bit of being forward is one of the things that you could do is say, well, listen, if that's the case, let's fill out the paperwork tonight. I'm not going to put it in the MLS. But if she says, great, yes, we're already ahead of the game. If she says, no, 
you know, we'll meet again or, or we'll uh, come back and, and talk further. Uh, again, what you're doing is tying them down. Uh, it would be optimal if you could have them fill out paperwork. Filling out paperwork ties people down. It also kind of scares people a little bit. Control the paperwork. Whenever I'm selling something to somebody, I never give them three or four or 10 pages and say, here you go. Can you fill this out? I always am the one that fills that out. Always, no matter what they're buying. If they're buying a car, although I've not sold a lot of cars, if they're buying education, if they're buying a house and it's a list or a, a purchase agreement, if they're doing that, I don't advise them on what they're filling out. I'm not acting as their attorney for compliance reasons, but I am explaining, hey, they're asking, you know, what your name is, what your address is, what your, you know, what's your credit card, what's your all of this, whatever it is. <clears throat> I want to be the one asking. What I don't want to do is give them 10 pages and get them overwhelmed. I also don't want them reading line by line what that is. They can do that later after the fact. And I don't want to um, influence them in any way other than in the sale. In other words, if they say, hey, I got to show this to my attorney. Great. There's an attorney clause right in here that you can show them over the next uh, seven days or over the next 14 days or whatever it is. Um, so, uh, again, I don't want to influence them in a negative way. Uh, I'm not talking about sales right now uh, to force them to sign the contract. Uh, there should be wanting to sign the contract based on what your presentation was. So uh, interesting thing that you could say there. Um, so again, that's perfectly fine. Um, hey, show this to Tom. Let me ask you this, though. If Tom uh, loves what he sees and says, hey, great, Mary, that sounds awesome. Let's let's do it. Uh, is this something that you would you would go with me today? You would list the house with me today? You would. OK, great. Let's do this then. Just to say about on time because you guys are busy. Let's let's get the listing agreement filled out. I'm not going to do anything with it. Um, I'm going to set it to the side. You're going to call me later tonight. It's a go or no go. Cool, fair. That way we save time. Um, and and really that that's a little more aggressive, but that's our tie down. And you know when people are going that far, they're gonna they want to sell the house if they got that far, right? So now again, uh, any answer other than yes. Uh, means that this objection, I got to show it to my wife, is just or husband, is just a smokescreen and you haven't uncovered the real objection. See how that works? So if they don't say yes, if they don't say yes to that, it's a smokescreen. If they say, if they say no, then you got to go back and find out what the, the real true objection is. Um, on the other hand, if your prospect says he would move forward on this today, then you've got to confirm and make him your ally. Say this, watch this. Really, really important that you do this. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, uh, great. Then I take, uh, I take it you're going to recommend this to Mary, right? Wonder, and he says, wonderful. Great. What can we do to make sure that Mary you know, is on our side, that she agrees with us? What do you think is the best thing that we can do? That's one way to say that. One way to avoid that is to make sure, and this is really important to make sure that you're asking up front about how decisions are made in their family. What do they do historically? Is it husband and wife? Is it just the husband? Is it just the wife? Um, if it's a, if it's a investment property, do all partners need to make an investment? Are you talking to the, uh, decision maker? So ask that question when you're on the phone with a prospect. And, and, uh, a lot of times I talk with, with, uh, Carlos about this is, Hey, is there anybody else that needs to be on this call? Um, that, that is, uh, in the decision making process, uh, a spouse, a, a business partner, a teammate, um, same thing here when you're listing a house. Hey, is there anybody else that needs to be a part of that listing meeting? Or when you're showing buyers, Heather's got showings all day tomorrow. Uh, you know, and so I'm having her uh, ask the question, Hey, does your, is there anybody else? You, you know, is your husband or boyfriend or, or wife or girlfriend, uh, or significant other, whatever it is, uh, need to be here. Do they need to be with us showing houses. So it's a way that you can eliminate that. I got to talk to my husband or spouse, so on and so forth. Couple more things here and then we're done. I know you don't want to be done. This is the best part of your day. It should be best part of your week. Uh, and then we'll ask some, get some questions answered, and uh, then we'll uh, we'll close up shop. Uh, do you see how you've made your prospect an ally after you said this? Hey, is there anything that we can do? 
to, to help her say yes, to help him say yes, to help them agree with us. Do you see how you made your prospect an ally and how you're now a team, you and your prospect? Listen carefully to what your prospect says, because if they are truly sold on your situation, they might tell you what you now need to do to close the sale. Um, yeah, you know what? I'd like you to come with me, but because uh, I'd love your support. But one of the things that that would really help is if um, you, she likes to be told or he, let's refer to it. He likes to be told what to do. And so I control the situation. But if you can get in there and you say, listen, we need to do this, this and this uh, to get this done. We need to do this, this and this. He'll listen to you. And so that's a great way to get yourself on the same team. So uh, listen carefully to what your prospect says, because if they are truly sold on the solution, they might tell you what you need to close the sale. Offer to do a three-way conference call. Zoom calls are best. You already know that from here. Or to call and speak to the real decision maker directly or do this in person, obviously. Uh, ask about the specific follow-up times for additional information that you can provide uh, them with. And always ask what the next step will be and get a de definite definitive time frame for the follow-up. You want to follow up. You want to tie them down. Really important that you do that. The bottom line is that when you get this in most objections, they are either the real objection or they're the smokescreen for the real objection. The problem that 80% about of real estate agents and brokers uh, have is they don't question the objection. So they end up spending their time chasing after what isn't really the real uh, objection. Remember to always qualify your objections before you answer them and then use the scripts that we've put together here. There's more coming. That's it. That is uh, the objection. So let me uh, stop sharing my screen. I'll come back. What about some questions? I know we've got some chats here. Let me open this up. Uh, so we've got Carlos just laughing at my stuff. That's cool. Uh, we got Greg. Sometimes if you are, sorry, so thought somebody was walking up on me here. Uh, sometimes if you are showing them your marketing plan, you can ask them. If you think my commission is too much, what part of the marketing plan do you want me not to do? Nice. You, you work it in reverse. In other words, what part do you want me to cut out of my marketing plan? Yeah, um, I, I see the idea of, of uh, throwing that in reverse to them. I, I love this, this giving them options. I'm telling you that it works. There's something psychologically there that they feel much better about your decision. If you see a good car salesman, if you see a good car salesman, they're always giving you two or three op, two or three cars, two or three different colors. They've got different options on them. Good, better, best. Good, better, best. And um, people feel much better about the decisions they make when they have options. Um, so just remember that when you're showing houses, give them options. When you're listing a property, give them options in what uh, they would have with their listing agreement. Um, very important that you do that. Um, uh, good morning, Rita. I see you're you're on the call. Good morning to you. Glad to have you. Um, and then wouldn't make sure that all the principals are at the appointment before you start. Um, I, I remember my first sales job. I was selling environmental services, and uh, what was interesting about that is I was I got a chance to work with a, a sales guy. He was so good. He was so good, and. Um, you know, I remember one of the first lessons. So I went through this. Um, see, I did have somebody walk in on me. Um, she's, you're not even on the, she's not on the training. She's not on the, she's not on the training. You gotta get on the training. Anyway, I'm gonna write that on her file, her permanent file, that is. Um, uh, he told me this. I went through this program. Uh, called the Xerox sales program. It's an old school thing. I don't know some of it, I'm uh, dating myself here, but I got through this training program. It's a Xerox sales program. IBM had one, Xerox had one. 
and they were really good. They give you a lot of foundations. This is where I bring to you guys the four questions of a sale, open-ended, closed-ended, reflective questions, buying questions, that type of thing. That's where I get that from. And um, one of the things I remember when I got back from that sale or that training was I had the skeleton, but I didn't have all these little things. And one of the things that he told me was um, to, as my first kind of mentor in sales was, listen, don't do any sales appointments uh, unless you're talking to the decision maker. And I'll never forget that. That always made me a better salesperson because I would ask, uh, I would just kind of ask in conversation, you know, you could tell who, who is the decision maker. Like uh, in, with Heather and I, it's, it's definitely me. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. She's, she's laughing over there. She's laughing. Yeah. So um, uh, ask who that is. It's really important because if you need both people there, get them there. Uh, make sure that you're doing that presentation with both of them there. It, it can work and it still works, but it doesn't work as well as if you had both decision makers there. Okay, any other questions? These are good. Anything, Carlos, Greg, anything, Susanna, Rita, anybody? Susanna's got one? Okay, hold on, let me unmute you. We're gonna go live here, you're on. Okay, um, I know we were talking about listing. Um, when I started doing um, for showings, a lot of buyers wanted to show me, wanted me to show them about anywhere from 10 to 20 homes and to see which one they would like. Yeah. So how would you be able to narrow that down after knowing that you know exactly what kind of home they wanted? Yeah, really good question. And so the first thing that I would do, there's no reason to show prospective buyers 20 homes. No reason at all. Have you ever seen that show? Um, uh, it's, it's a couple of different names where they show them three properties and they select one, right? Uh, it's not li love it or list it. House Hunters. House Hunters. Boom. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, so House Hunters, they're showing three properties. The reason that we the reason that agents show 20 properties is they're not qualifying their buyer and they're not putting in place a system. And we have it here. I can help you with that. Putting in place a system to find out exactly what it is they're looking for. And it's not easy. I get it. You still may be, even though you narrow it down to three, you might be looking at more. But to show people 20 is means that we haven't um, found specifically we haven't qualified them enough to find out exactly what they're looking for to find them the better, uh, uh, good, better, best. And it might be it might be six or seven houses, but twenty is way way overboard. So, Susanna, one of the ways is we start to qualify that buyer ahead of time, and we can do this in several ways. Sometimes the buyers qualify themselves. Uh, in other words. If you send them a group of listings, they say, I like A, B, C, D, E, F. Great. Let's get on the phone. Let's get on a Zoom call. Let's meet in person and go over A, B, C, D, E, F and narrow that down. Um, and you can talk about time. You can talk about other things. But one of the, the things that I think is really important is showing them how much you understand about what they want. Um, have you ever worked with a salesperson that um, was was guiding you along the sales process and they knew you so well that they were making suggestions like, uh, hey, did, look at the kitchen in this one. What do you think about that, Joe? Joe's like, yeah, I really like the garage in that one. And Linda's like, I love that kitchen. I, I want that house right now. So at that point, you got to almost slow the roll a little bit, right? Or it could be reversed. Joe could love the kitchen and uh, Linda could love the garage. But you get my point there. Qualify the buyer. Um, we, I, one of the biggest complaints I see from agents is they're like, I hate showing people houses. You ever hear that? You ever hear that from people? I just can't stand showing people houses. Yeah, that's because you're showing too many. You're not qualifying the buyer up front and really kind of understanding what the perfect house is for them. That's part of the exercise. 
put down 10 things that would be the perfect house for you. Draw it. And then when you meet with them, I learned this trick from um, my uh, rhetoric teacher in high school. She uh, said to one of the exercises was to draw a picture frame, frame paragraph in writing. So as you're writing, uh, have people think like a movie. And so what you could do, this is a, a simple trick, but what you could do is when you're sitting with them, you could say, uh, you know, Joe or Mary, um, give me the, give me what in, in three minutes, give me a tour of your perfect house. Explain it to me. And so let's do that now. Let's do that now. You want to do that? So let's go, um, let's go to, let's go to Carlos. He hasn't said much today. So I'm not, is that cool? Uh, Susanna? Yeah, oh, that's fine. Okay. Actually, hey, John, can I, I wanted to add something to that of what Susanna's yeah. question was just cause I found myself at the beginning with, with the same situation where someone was getting so many houses seen. And then all of a sudden, like you're looking back and you're like, where am I right now? We're like literally 15, 20 houses deep. What happened to this? Um, we, um, one thing that I've noticed is that everyone today is on realtor.com, Zillow. They're looking up their own houses. So they get themselves spun off. The control from what I found was me getting better at MLS, number one, because on the MLS and even on our website that we have with Anton, we can, we can set parameters for them to get certain priced homes, right? Because we know what their price is. We've already pre-qualified them. So we know where they're at. What I found with this one person that I had the best experience, like learning experience was we knew for a fact she couldn't go over 200,000 period point blank every single house she ever sent me was over 200,000 yeah because they want that they want it for 200 right they want 220 for 200 so controlling that and getting them set on that system to where they can only look at those houses you know and like with our MLS here in Florida we can send them that link that uh, allows them to search through our MLS with ours but only what's sent to them is within the parameters yeah. And it gets them busy looking at those things that pop up on the market as opposed to the other, the overpriced stuff. So that's I found that there people are just looking on their own and they'll send you a bunch of stuff, but they'll always look. They want the next the next level when they can't really have it. And that was an issue that I had there. So the control yeah. was the big yeah. piece. Yeah, that's common. And sometimes you gotta rein people in a little bit. Sometimes you rein them in by using your team, like who your mortgage broker would be. Uh, or a financial guy, and, and you know, obviously, if they have a pre approval letter, hey man, you can't go over 200. Why are you looking at $245,000 homes? Can't yeah. go over 200. Well, do you think we can get it for 200? No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's, you know what I mean? So, um, I think that's the, the real, um, oh, hold on one second here. Yeah, thank you. That's what, Hello, I, need. That's what I need. Donut holes. Thank you, Abby. Um, so, the, uh, you're going to have to rein them in a little bit, but you're right, Carlos, the whole, you know, the, the consumer is educated today. So they go out and get all these houses. Um, what I would do is have an exercise with them. And this is something that most agents don't do. And I would just say, Carlos, uh, you sent me a ton of stuff. We've looked at a ton of stuff. Um, do me a favor. Let's spend a little bit of time here and, and tell me in, in two minutes, three minutes, what your ideal house is from the moment you pull up to the front of the house. Give me, give, give that to me. Give me that description. Go. Say that again, boss. <laughs> so I'm actually going to have you do this, Carlos. So gotcha. gotcha. Sorry. I got, I think I turned you off. I apologize. That's okay. So Carlos, uh, we've gone through a ton of houses. We, you've sent me a ton of houses, you know, uh, we're kind of getting lost in the minutia of all of the houses here to get a really good, uh, so I can help you the best. You know, um, give me a two minute, three minute description, pulling up into your house, pulling into the driveway, what the ideal house is for you and Francis. What's the ideal house? Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Right. Again, sorry. There you go. Uh, what I would love to do is uh, drive up to a three car garage house. Um, that would, for me, would be the number one thing with some nice appeal at the front. Uh, the, I know for my wife, the biggest thing she's looking for is a very open kitchen with a really big island in the middle. As long as we can get something like that, no galleys, no galley kitchens, nothing enclosed, just something large like that. Uh, and we're looking for at least 22, 2300 square feet. And then the rest is pretty good there. Okay. Let me ask you this, Carlos. For Frances, what's her 
push button that she's got to have, like one thing that she can't negotiate on, she's got to have it. That's the big kitchen, big open big, kitchen. Big open kitchen, perfect, with an island in the middle. What's, yep. the, what's the one thing that she could give up, but if we got it in the house, she would be like, she would feel completely satisfied. She would give up. Man, that's that's a that's that's a terrible question because I don't think she'll give up anything. Why don't you ask me what I would give up? No. Uh she would probably I think she would she would negotiate on the kitchen as far as what it has. Um as long as the the living area with the kitchen was large, was open, very okay. open. Okay. Thing. Now let's yeah. go to you. What's the what's the one thing? And and by the way, I could press you a little bit, Carlos, and say, give me the movie, man. Give me when you walk in the front door. What's the door feel like? What's the What's the, uh, are you looking at a stairway as soon as you walk in? When you walk up the stairs, how many bedrooms upstairs? How many downstairs? Give me that movie. I could press you on that, but I won't do that now. But you guys get the point. Yeah. But give me your, give me the one thing that you got to have in this house moving forward. It would be the three car garage, man. Just don't give me any, don't give me two. I need the space. I need are my you a workshop. Car guy? Are you a car guy? Yeah. Yeah, I know you are. He, Carlos buys cars that I try, I fit, I I sit in the passenger seat and it's, it, people have to get me out. You know what I mean? They're like, um, so, uh, yeah. So, okay. you love, you love cars. Boom. Yeah. Writing that down. Cars. Boom. Writing that down. Open kitchen. Boom. Um, what's the one thing, Carlos, that you could, um, uh, give up, but man, if you had it in a house, you would feel completely satisfied. You know, I may, I may, I, I'll give up the three car if I can get some space like in the back that's got it. But yeah, I, I mean, I guess I could give up the three car as long as I had another space somewhere else in the house. No, that's um, not what I'm after. We're going to keep the oh. three car garage. Give me something oh, okay. else. Yeah, give me something else. That I would give up? Yeah. Jeez. Um, huh. I would, I would give up a little bit more space inside the house. Okay, so, so you go smaller square, square foot footage. inside if you yeah. had a garage. Yeah. Yeah, so you want your garage to be almost bigger than your house. Is that what you're saying? Sure. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. It sounds like a true guy. square foot garage, yeah. 1,500 yeah. square foot house. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So what I'm getting at here, guys, is this is qualification of your buyer, but it's really diving deep. It's not going wide. It's diving deep. Most agents think if I send them 40 listings, they're going to think I'm great. You're doing them an injustice because they won't be able to make a decision. And it's going to waste your time out in the field. One of the things that is important is walking them through this exercise to find out exactly what they want, exactly what they want. What's their push buttons? What's the thing that they would give up? And then what's the other, uh, another way to ask that second question is this. Hey, listen, what would be the thing that um, you would spend money on that you would overpay for in a house? Uh, and you'd be okay with it. That's another way to say that. Um, and the reason I'm saying it that way is people buy stuff all the time. They overpay for it, uh, but they feel satisfied because of what the thing gives them. This isn't a Dr. Phil moment with your your clients. This is a moment in which you're influence them, influencing them in the sales process to give them what they want. Um, so for instance, it could be something like this. You know what? I would overpay for a pool in the backyard. I know uh, that's kind of my vice, but we work 50 hours a week and I just I can I can picture and imagine myself coming home and you're going to lead them in this. Carlos, you've heard this. I can picture and imagine myself coming home and, you know, having a drink ready, getting sitting out by the pool, maybe getting in the pool and just that's going to be my decompression factor. So again, you guys know we train on the chemistry of the sale. Um, the, I, so I would go into it like this. I might even guide them in that way. I'll say, hey, Carlos, can you imagine? I mean, I know you said that garage, but let me ask you this. Uh, if I could find you this three-car garage that um, you're talking about, and this garage had a beautiful finished floor, and they had this beautiful cabinetry system already built in that you could put all your tools and, you know, you kind of put your car in there, spotless clean, and it's like a trophy room for your car.
but yet it's also kind of like a man cave for you. Uh, if I could find you that, how would that make you feel? I I, I want to I want to buy it now. Whatever you just sold me, I want it. Okay, you see what I'm doing? I'm selling him before I even yeah. found any houses, but I'm also putting pictures in his mind of the movie. What, the movie. I'm making the movie. I'm a producer. I'm putting pictures in the mind to make the movie of either what the house is that I'm about to show him or what the house could be with a little work on, on, uh, from Carlos. I might find a bare bones garage, but then I go, Hey, remember that movie we were talking about? Dude, you can easily finish this to make this your man cave. And it goes back to that movie. What's the chemistry going on in Carlos's brain at that point? What is it? What are those, uh, are those in, in my, the endorphins? Yeah, uh, the, the, uh, going on. dopamine is probably going dopamine. on, right? That's the dopamine. One, yeah. And so that's all I'm doing. Just like I could say, man, uh, you know, if, if this was another situation, I might go the other way and, and try to induce some cortisol uh, by that. But that's not needed at that point. But again, this is it, man. Getting through the smoke screens, getting through the objections and getting to the real objection, isolating it and then dealing with it, doing your lockdown. Hey, if Mary agrees with what we came up here. Is this something you'll list with me tonight? Something you listen with me tonight? You know what I mean? And I'm telling you guys are going to get more sales. I want, I want you guys to make more money than, than anybody else that you're uh, not competing with, but in your general area. Because I, I truly believe you guys don't compete with anybody. Um, if you do this right, you compete with yourself probably every day. And, uh, that, and you can be creative. Create, creativity trumps competition. I wrote this in... Um, in my third book, The Alchemy of Wealth, I, uh, create, I'm trying to think of the chapter that was in. Creativity trumps competition all the time, all the time. When I'm dealing with Carlos here, I'm not – notice that I'm, he may be working with another agent perhaps, but what I'm doing is I'm creating in Carlos the movie that makes him happy, and I'm telling you that builds rapport with me. Every time he gets with me, I give him a hit of dopamine, and I'm being ethical. I'm not – saying someone should use drugs, but our brain is a, our brain is a pharmacy. I'm just being the pharmacist. So all I'm saying is I'm, I'm making Carlos feel good by the description that I'm giving him. And then you know what? I'm going to give Carlos what he wants. I'm going to service Carlos in that. I'm, I'm, that's what sales is, is of service. And so I'm going to give Carlos what he wants. I'm going to find him that perfect house. That's a three car garage. That is going to be his man cave slash museum for that car he drives that bigger bone people can't sit in and I'm going to get Francis her kitchen, the open kitchen, big Island in the middle. That's what it is. So, um, uh, yeah, that's all that I was kind of, uh, wanted to, to bring through with that uh, question that you had or that statement, maybe Carlos, anybody else, everybody else good. Okay, guys, we are just after the top of the hour here tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to do something really cool. I'm going to go over a tip really cool at the beginning. And um, it's about milk. That's the tip. It's about milk. I'll give you a little hint. It's about milk. And, um, and then we're going to have an open forum. Bring your questions. If you're working on deals right now, if you're strategizing about something, if you've got a buyer, if you've got a seller, if you've got a listing, whatever, bring them. I'm going to help you. We'll do that tomorrow. Uh, I did shift the call from Tuesday to Thursday. I appreciate that. That may happen next week as well. I don't know yet, but I'll, I will definitely let everybody know. And uh, I'm here if you guys need me. Remember, wealth has nothing to do with money. Success has everything to do with failure. And life is as simple as you make it. Thanks a lot. Have a great week. We will see everybody uh, tomorrow.